Hey everyone, this is three questions with Dan Wolf. There we go, man. So many Dan. Dan is sat with me. Dan is sat with me through a million technical difficulties. My camera's broke. My Wi-Fi is out. So it is. I appreciate you kind of working me through this stuff. Hey, no problem. It's uh, perseverance, grit. We're, we're in it together. I, I love it. And so, actually, I I didn't know this about Dan. Dan is a. Uh, uh, I don't know. Can I call myself? I've only been here for like six months. Am I a Floridian now? Am I like, I know you're a Floridian. So yes, you I, I, yes, you are a Floridian. Yes. Okay. All right. So Dan is actually um, maybe like an hour and a half, two hours away from me. So we could have probably done this in person, but uh, really cool. And Dan is actually the off, author of a new book called Becoming the Change, Five Essential Elements to Being Your Best Self. He actually um, published that with Road to Awesome, which is Darren Pepper. And I hope, am I saying his name right? Darren Pepper. Yep. Dar like I was like almost like Darren Papard, like George Papard from like the A Team. I don't know if you remember, I'm dating myself. Do you remember the A Team? Like yeah, yes, I do. I, I used to watch that show. I actually had their lunchbox. Uh, I'll put that out oh, there too. I, I am vulnerable. I, yeah. I love it. I love it. So um, before we get into the three questions, if you can just kind of give everyone just a quick snapshot of your new book, Becoming the Change. What's it about? Just so people are interested, and anyone who's listening, it is down in the link below. Okay. Uh, the book is called Becoming the Change, Five Essential uh, Elements to Being Your Best Self. And it's focused on uh, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, uh, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. As many know, those are the five um, uh, uh, components of social-emotional learning. And uh, what, what the focus is in regards to it is you have, um, I have a self-assessment within there that uh, you have to make sure you know, we tell our kids to be vulnerable. We need to be vulnerable ourselves and answer the questions honestly and openly. Yeah. And it will go ahead and give you feedback as to what your strengths are out of the five areas and what your limitations are. And the book provides um, a uh, roadmap to uh, becoming your best self. I love that. And I think, you know, we have to show that vulnerability as adults to having these conversations. A lot of times, like, we're teaching kids stuff that we don't do ourselves, And that to me is like, if you know, we're talking about the stuff in school, how do we model that ourselves? And that's the best way to teach it is to actually learn it first, which I love. And so not only does Dan have uh, a book called Become the Change, he's got a podcast, he's got a blog. Um, they're all titled and you'll see them down in the links below. And Dan actually before this podcast, so we had like started, when did you say you started 2019, your blog and you have like 800 and some posts, like 860 posts. Yeah. I started in December, 2019. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And each of those kind of posts are just, uh, I'm a big quotes person. And so right. I just take a famous quote and I apply it to one of the five areas or our own moral compass and then write about what it means to me and then ask the reader what it means to them because, um, uh, quotes over time, they mean different things to us at different points in our lives based on our experiences. So if you if you anyone sees Dan just typing in the middle of this, you know, he's probably blogging because there's no other way you get probably just do it in the middle of conversation. So maybe I'll say something smart and you'll throw me in your blog. So who knows? That's right. right. Just look for the timestamp. You'll see it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. So, Dan, you've been in education. We were talking uh, 25 plus years. I think 26 is actually the number. Uh, you're mm -hmm. currently assistant principal. You look back on your career, maybe look back on your own school experience. When you think of an educator or a teacher that really had an impact on you, who's someone that really inspired you and why? Um, his, his name is Dr. Clint Wright. Um, he, um, he had two, um, he was also a big quotes person. Maybe that's where I've kind of had the following. One of the things that he said to us um, was, if it's to be, it's up to me. Uh, anything that we want in life, we've got to go out and get it. Nobody's going to hand it to you on a silver platter. And I've kind of taken that. I borrowed it, I guess you could say. Right. And I, when I was in the classroom, I would use it with my kids. And then um, as an administrator, he said, he said something else that I now apply to it. Um, it's a poor uh, frog who doesn't praise its own pond. And that's just being able to acknowledge those around you and let them know that they matter, that they're important, because many times we take that for granted. We think that they know that, but just like right. the kids need to hear things specifically, so does our staff, so do the people we work with. Um, they need to hear that that authenticity from, you know, even at, as we are as adults. I love so. that. We're going to give a little shout out, Mr. Wright. I love it. So hopefully he he's listening right now. And one of the things I actually wrote about this because of a teacher and you just so um, brilliantly displayed this, that when you actually have an impact, um, as a teacher on a kid, it you it's never limited to the kid. 
it's always goes and spreads out. So the the fact that this is something you picked up in a classroom and then all the kids who have, you know, interacted with you have also learned that. And then all of them probably going out and sharing some of that advice with others shows that one teacher has like spread way beyond the classroom, which I absolutely love. And that's, you know, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is when we like focus on how our great teachers can make such an impact that goes beyond the classroom. That is a generational change. So I, I, I love that story. Now you are currently an assistant principal, um, in the state and, uh, you've worked with a ton of administrators over your lifetime. I know you're doing, we were talking about this before, you're doing some work in the state too, um, with some leadership standards, which I found really fascinating when we were talking about that. When you think about the great administrators that you have worked with, maybe that you had as a kid, who's someone that really inspired you and why? Um, it's, uh, he just recently retired. Um, his name is uh, Todd Clough. And uh, he was actually, um, I was part of a regional team at one time where we would support 18 uh, Title I schools, um, uh, elementary through high school. And, uh, and he really uh, embodied servant leadership. And um, that is something that I believe, have always believed in, but he was just the epitome of it. Um, everything he did was looking at it through the, the lens of whoever we were working with, that we had 18 Title I schools, each had its own story. Each had its own uniqueness um, and really got to, it wasn't so much about the the, the data and everything. everybody gets all right. lost in the weeds with the data, but it's more about their story and where they're coming from and where they're going. And just to see his, how he uh, handled himself, uh, relationships with others, um, just, you know, just really um, admired everything, his work ethic and everything. And I always joke with people. I said, when I get older, I want to be just like Todd. So, uh, or I channel my inner Todd. So that's, I love he, it. He, you know, and that's what I strive to do is just be that servant leader. All right, Todd Clough, if you're listening, get a little shout out from Dan, which is amazing. The One of the things that um, you said is, is also something I've talked about for a while and is really important to me is this idea. Um, I don't really talk about Actually, I do talk about data driven as being stupid. <laughs> it's like a dumb term we should be using. But I talk about the idea of learner driven evidence informed practice that really you are driven by the people in front of you. And that should be your driver. Now, I'm not saying don't discount data, but you shouldn't be driven by it. And the terminology I use evidence is much more holistic because there's much more to like grades and tests. There's, you know, conversations we have in the hallway, which tell us a lot about our kids and actually really is incredible research that is almost not acknowledged in education that every conversation we have with, with our students is incredible research that's happening and helps us to serve them and um, even before the podcast we were talking about how important it is um, there, there's a lot of conversations about social emotional learning we've all I, I would say that we've always done social emotional learning just someone came and put a label on it Mm -hmm. that really knowing your kids and you know kind of helping them kind of navigate their emotions is a really important piece uh, and it is connected to how well they do in school that you know we, we still want our kids to be able to read and write but if you actually have the ability to read and write which is a is a minimum expectation and and you know to do math right like right. The, the basics whatever they're, they're doing but you don't have the ability to to connect with people then those both of those things matter right mm -hmm. and so like that that's a really powerful connection to that now one of the things i really appreciate about you is your your book from you know in the conversations before the show was really kind of not something that you set out to do it was a progression of your blog and mm -hmm. a progression of your podcast and so really kind of focused on sharing your learning and making your learning public which i think is a really brilliant thing especially as an administrator uh, because people then kind of kind of dig deep into you and understand where you're coming from and stuff like this. So obviously you're a constant learner and you've been in education, as you said, 26 years. So if you go back to your first year of teaching, especially as someone who is continuing to learn, one of the things I really appreciate about you is that a quote, you said this, um, could mean th something to you today and something totally different a year from now. So go back to your first year of teaching. If you were to talk to a first year teacher, Dan, what advice would you give to yourself? First and foremost, I think, uh, trust the process. Um, oftentimes we want to get to the finish line um, without really enjoying the ride. And I think that's something in retrospect, 
Um, I wish I would have done more um, because, I mean, looking back, I can appreciate it, but I never, I don't think I appreciated it as much early on going through the trials and tribulations of being a first year teacher, you know, um, you have all these uh, grand expectations and everything, and you put all these pressures unnecessarily. Um, I, I think it, if I could go back, that's what I would tell myself is just trust the process, enjoy the ride and um, don't be so hard on yourself. Well, they, I was having a conversation with an administrator the other day and, and I, I was like, it's kind of like a trick question a little bit, right? I'm like, well, how do you know you've reached where you want to go? And, and I, I put, kind of put him on the spot. He's like, well, I don't, I don't think there is like an end point. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of how I believe like the best organizations that I've worked with and, and the most, incredible teachers that I've worked with over the years, they don't necessarily see an end point. They see the, the process as the product, right? Mm -hmm. That you are willing to grow and to get better and to learn. And once you kind of feel like I'm there, that's when you're, that's when you get in trouble. I think that's part of it is that how do we kind of continuously push ourselves? Cause we ask kids to do it every single day. And if we're not willing to, you know, see the, the, the process as the product, then uh, we're in trouble. So Dan, it's been awesome talking to you and, and learning more about, uh, your work. So everyone, um, check out Jan Dan's book, Becoming the Change, Five Essential Elements to Being Your Best Self. You can also check out his podcast, check out his blog, basically does everything. So like, that's pretty awesome. And then, and then runs, you know, runs a school on the side and, you know, just kind of does <laughs> right. all this other stuff. So, um, everyone, Dan, uh, thanks for listening, Dan. Thanks so much for being on and, uh, thanks, thanks for, for having me. to the state too. I appreciate it. So everyone, oh, yeah. no. thanks, thanks for listening. For